Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back office Teardown Lab. If you've got an Odroid Go, there's a lot of things to love about this. It's a great unit, but the problem is, is that it doesn't have headphones. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna modify this for headphone output. First things first when you're working on something like this is to get the schematic. So I've been on the uh, Odroid GitHub and you get everything by the way. And if you want me to go through this one day, please uh, leave a comment down below and I will be happily explain to you how an Odroid is built from schematics. I'll either do it in a video or a live stream. Either way, ping me down below or better come on my Discord and harass me there because I'll definitely be able to tell you what's going on here. If you skim through this, you will find this actually turns out to be on the first page, sheet one of four, right here in the uh, top corner, this little guy. And it isn't actually labeled here, but I'm telling you, this is the audio amp. And it's using a PAM 8304 I'm not sure it's using exactly a PAM8304 or a clone, but it doesn't matter, it's using this chip. And basically you can see it's being driven here by two IO lines from the main processor. And so they're providing a negative output and a positive. So basically it's a differential signal with audio because you don't want to have a ground reference. So for example, you do not want to have one uh, pin on your CPU twiddling this and this one drop to ground in general because that's going to cause you a lot of noise. So what the uh, what better designs do, and this is one of those, is of course it drives it both from the CPU uh, via GPIO line and instead of looking something like this where you have a ground and then you have your sound coming like that, you actually end up with a differential signal coming from your CPU and it's looking like that. Okay, so you get a positive one and you get a negative one. Nice and simple. So that's what's being fed into the amplifier, positive and negative. It's got power, it's got uh, SD, I don't know, standby, I don't know what that means, who cares, doesn't matter, ground. Um, and then it's providing the outputs to your speaker and that's your speaker right there. And then there's some sort of capacitors here to deal with noise. Although, interestingly enough, I thought there would be something that defines the actual level of amplification that's going on here. So I was a little bit mm, confused here, and let's not worry about that. Sometimes these things have a, a feedback circuit. I'm sure this one does. Um, I'd have to look into it. But yeah, normally there's a combination between uh, resistors and capacitors, and they offer that sort of changes the amplification level of this. Anyway, it does seem to be pumping out a lot because it's pumping out a lot to the speaker. So if you plug in headphones, it's way loud. It's way too loud. So what we need to do is one, see where we can put headphones on here, and two, see how we're going to attenuate this signal so that we can make it the right levels for headphones. So enough of the talk. I can hear. You, I can feel you getting bored already. You're just saying, get on with it. So fine, get on with it. So what I've done is I've dismantled uh, an MP3 player I had just bought from a China, sort of usual China special, and it has this little PCB in there and it had a headphone socket. Now this headphone socket isn't ideal because it's just a three pin device, which is ground, left channel, right channel, but you'll notice it doesn't have a disconnect. And I was really looking forward to finding one with a disconnect and I just don't have one in my box. But I thought, you know, for me right now, it's better I just modify this to take the headphone socket because they're pretty standard anyway and uh, not worry about the disconnect so much because one, I, I just don't really use speakers and if my kids grab hold of this, it's even better than they can't even make a sound with it. <laughs> and if I really wanted to, I suppose I could make a little speaker that plugs into this, but you'll see after we attenuate down, you won't really have much drive for a, a big speaker. Now looking around the board, you kind of like have a little shifty, shifty around, see where you can put your, um, let's take the SD card out by the way, before we break that. Um, there's not an awful lot of places you can mount that. There's more than you think, but there's definitely not an infinite number. So you've got a few choices. My preferred choice, by the way, and it's kind of slightly awkward in that it needs the PCB to be taken out, is there because you've got a massive clear area right there in that top corner. That one is a no brainer. Elsewhere, let's see. Um, yeah, you see elsewhere you've got bits where you have to go between the transition of two lines and that's going to be a big problem for you to uh, cut that out. I'm not saying it can't be done, it's just why why bother when you've got this whole space here where the 
uh, RF antenna, the uh, Wi-Fi antenna is. I don't think really you're going to affect the performance too much. I mean, could you mount it vertically? Not really. There's no. It would be. Uh, it would be tight. I can't, now that we're saying it right, I kind of think we want to try it. So let's put this envelope down real quick. And you can see I've been doing some doodling on here. We might use that later, actually. Um, so we're going to take this out. I've, I've basically more or less figured out how to do this in terms of electrically. But I'm just going to show you how to actually hook up the last bits so you get um, so you get a nice case hole, basically. And I'm guessing before be, before we drill anything, we're going to want to take the PCB out anyway, so it doesn't hurt. So that's the four screws holding the PCB in. Let's take that power switch out. Crikey, I am hot. Tell you what, I am hot today. Hot and sweaty. Right, let's take that out. You can see I've disconnected the screen. Don't want that interfering. So one potential option is there. Not really. So that was going to be my... <laughs> you know, not Hail Mary so much, but maybe, but it's not, it's kind of not really maybe. I mean, yeah. if we file this down, we could probably get it to fit. So let's just check an actual headphone plug on it, which we have here. Yeah, because the headphone pushes right out to the edge, there's no chance of filing this down and getting it slimmer. So that's not going to go there. One last check for luck. Nope, sorry guys, you have to cut the screen if you want to do that. I think that top corner is where we need to go. So I'm just going to position that there and say, yeah, that's fine. So what we're going to do, I'm going to disconnect these gubbins. It's a bit of hassle, I know, but you're basically dismantling everything. Now remember, you're working around the screen now and you'll be generating dust. I suggest putting some masking tape. Okay, uh, we're good to go. So I got some vernier calipers. Let's set those up. Zero them. It's looking like five millimeter. Uzi five millimeter. So that's fine. Five millimeters is something we can deal with. So we're going to take this unit and I'm going to mark a hole. Now you could go measure it. Mm -mm -mm. I advise you do. Mm -mm -mm. But I'm going to go carefully. And that's where I think it should go. <laughs> and I know at home you can't see that. <laughs> Let's see if we can zoom in so you can spot that hole right there. Do you see it right there? So if you take this and you can imagine you're going to pop it in right there. Booyah! That's where it's going to live. So, <laughs> so we're going to take our five millimeter drill bit and we're going to make that hole. Yeah. Oh droid, oh droid. Oh, by the way, you can see I've uh, put some masking tape down. You saw how fussy I was before about my uh, dusty screen. Five millimeters seems a bit generous. I'm almost wondering if we're gonna go, f no, it is exactly five. But before we do five, I'm gonna give you a little tip here. I'm gonna take a one, uh, let's do a one and a half. One could be too small. I mean, if you're using a drill this size, the chuck's not gonna take a uh, one, but if you've got a Dremel, it should be fine. There we go. Of course, small tools are good tools. I'm going to hold this screen up so the dust falls down, and we're going to we're going to do this carefully. And this is a heavy drill to hold. <laughs> so you can see, don't do what I'm doing, where I have one piece of work in my hand and one piece of work in the other hand. If I'm doing it properly, I'd be doing it like this. But I'm trying to video this for you, um, so it could go horribly wrong. It's okay so far. It's a bit wobbly. Now you can see I was doing that super slow, but there's the pilot starting right there. So I'm going to do this a slightly different way. You're not going to be able to see it, but I just want to get it right. One second. Bear with me. Ooh, that drill bit is bent. You can't see that, but there's a lot of play on the end of that drill bit. Right, good. So that came off nice and cleanly. It looks like, just imagine a reset button on a gadget. That's kind of the look it's got right now. Straight to the five, gonna zoom out a bit. You need to get me more room. This camera dangling down doesn't help.
Ooh, look at that. Now remember, drill bits do not like to drill circular holes, so take your time with that, but it's gonna be all right. If you had a bench drill set up now, I think that's gonna be pretty good for you. Don't go too nuts, because you might hit the screen. So I'm gonna try, work out how, how I can do this sensibly while I'm filming it. Slowly, slowly and carefully. That's how I'm approaching this right now. Tell you what, I've never taken so much care in my life. Wow, <laughs> nearly through. Incidentally, it's pretty hard this stuff. I don't know what this is made of. I'll have to check the material on this. Good stuff. Booyah, there we go, got it. You can see I just caught that as it was going through. Didn't want it to damage anything, and it didn't. Right, let's pull this away. And we'll try our test fit. The moment of truth. That is perfect. Come on, come on, give me some cred for that. Focus, come on. Yeah, boy, you'd be happy with that. That is fine, absolutely fine. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Okay, good. Onwards with the next phase then. So we got that in there. Now what I would say to do, I would offer some uh, glue on that. In fact, <clears throat> I think I'm gonna glue it now. And then what we can do is wait a while although for you at home it will seem almost instantaneous or actually what's going to happen in reality is i'm going to glue it and just work on this while the glue is drying i'm just going to poke in some headphones just to because i know they're going to force that out and it has so let's take that there we're going to take off our masking tape so i'm going to go with just some contact adhesive i think it's a uh, pretty <gasps> not want to shove that in there. I take more care than I am. My masking tape almost removed my backlighting there. Okay, good. I'm back again. So I'm just going to use some regular old Yoohoo on here. And it's so hard to use contact. Look, see, as soon as you take the lid off, a big blob just pours out. It's weird with contact adhesive, it always just loves to go everywhere. But I'll put some there. Okay. So if you're using contact adhesive, they always recommend you put it on both surfaces. So I'm not really going to be able to uh, mess with that too much. I'm just going to take an old lollipop stick, and it is literally a lollipop stick, and I'm just going to rub it on the end so we'll need to zoom in a bit for that so you can see what I'm up to but I'm just really applying it on that part that I know is going to be in contact with the plastic of the case and try to do a reasonably pretty job of this because it might be visible I'm just going to put it there's some shoulders on this thing I'm just going to put it on the shoulders now, if you've got a, a, a one which has a disconnect circuit, that'll be pretty cool as well. So we'll be able to implement that disconnect feature. But as I said now, on my one, it's only gonna have headphone mode right now until I get around to getting a different headphone socket. But yeah, that's gone in nicely. So you can see that still looks pretty clean. It's not, um, focus. It's not messed it up at all. It's just it's just in there. It's got a nice bit of glue. And if we put the PCB back again, let's just see how that's going to fit like that. That's pretty damn good, isn't it? That's pretty damn good. I mean, if you really wanted to, let's see the back. The back's a bit frosted there. You could even put a tiny bit more glue on the edge, uh, which I might do. I mean, it's, I'm not sure how much it's going to help, but. 
yeah see just like that just a tiny bit in there probably not going to help much <laughs> okay so before we put anything back I'm going to show you where we're connecting to so we've got a couple of test points down here on the board you'll see them right there speaker plus minus so that those test points here just above the plus and minus actually are the plus and minus from the amplifier chip right here so this is where we're going to hook in and you can see I've disconnected my speaker and that's not going to go back in because even with these mods if I pl plug that speaker back in you're going to get sound on the speaker it might be attenuated it might be a bit quieter but it's definitely going to be noticeable so we're not going to do that but the reason I'm showing you that is because we're going to need to hook up and I'm just noticing actually the uh, PCB here this PCB is actually touching that leg so you see there's a little leg there the PCB is sitting on that in an uncomfortable way so we're just going to bend that up too so that's the uh, one of the channels but that's fine just bent it straight up I'm just going to test that PCB one last time uh, yeah that's pretty sweet that sits in <laughs> when it's the right way around see there you cannot get a closer fit than that that is perfect it's like it's made for it it really is so what we're going to do is we're going to run some wires from there to there so what I'm going to use is this Kynar cable and the reason I want to do it now is you can see well, I don't know actually you know what those wires are pretty accessible I guess they're accessible enough with this in I'm going to put this all back together and we're going to just get onto wiring it okay we're all back now we're going to just start wiring this up I just thought I'd show you this diagram this is the original speaker and what we have here by the way when you have a, a, a jack that goes in the end you notice they look something like that and they've got a couple of bars and then there's a connector here so this one is ground and I can't remember exactly but this is like right and this is left or vice versa in this case it doesn't matter it's only a mono output so uh, what we've got what we've got to do in this one we're going to wire the right and the left together basically and then we're going to take the two wires uh, down to the bottom of the board here and those two wires will just be the wires that will be coming to those two test points now in order to make sure the signal is correct we need to put in a potential divider and I've already played with this a little bit in earlier experiments and this is what they look like when you're messing around with just normal resistors but it seems to be a decent ratio it's sort of like that now I couldn't find the exact values I want so I've got surface mount resistors so I've got 120 ohm resistors and 820 so I'm going to kind of use them as my ratio they're not quite what I wanted and I'm going to have to figure out how to solder those tiny little surface mount components there so that's going to be a little bit of fun so the uh, thing to do really is to so we can either hook up the Kynar to go from here to here but I think we almost want to just play around with these surface mount because I've chosen that particular technology and uh, if you've got regular resistors you're not going to have any of this pain I mean this is going to be a right royal pain I can assure you so what I've got to do is basically put the the 6 ohm the larger resistor in uh, uh, in series basically with the output like that and then the smaller value is in parallel over where the speaker goes so <laughs> that's going to be lots of fun so let's just open up this resistor this is the 820 ohms and again remember if you've got regular through hole components that's all you're doing you're taking the wire to that DC jack that's going to the DC jack just like that and you're putting in those two resistors in the uh, the wires that are going up there it would have been so much simpler but sometimes you just don't have these values I do have values by the way to, to do this ratio which are much higher so if you put in like a 600 ohms and a 200 ohms you could do that but effectively you're loading up your uh, amplifier and it's not nice to the chip to do that crikey look and these are those components you can see there's two of them there I only need the one but there's two so I'm going to put one of these pieces of dust away ah it just jumped I just hit the, the deck and it just like jumped like a flea so where the heck did it go it's on the tip of my finger see see how easy it is to lose these got ya right now he's got so let's zoom in 
So just to show you that you can definitely solder these test points, because if I'm able to do what I'm about to do with this, you'll definitely be able to do it with regular stuff. And I mean, if you really wanted to, you could try to get hold of one of these connectors and just solder it direct to that speaker port. But I'm not going to do that because I'm, I'm kind of, I'm in a rush in a way. I just kind of want to get it done with what I've got so I can just get on and use this when I'm on an airplane or on a train. <laughs> I've always got my headphones on, so it's not a problem for me. I've always got wired headphones somewhere. Funnily enough, even if I've got Bluetooth headphones, I know you always have a set of wired headphones anyway. Okay. So there's test. I'm going to put it on test point two there. That's pretty much it. It's done. No fuss there. I don't know if you can see it there. It's just sitting there next to test point two, happy as Larry. I mean, we could test to see if my camera has even the slightest ability to focus on something like that. There we are. Test point two. So that's the first one done, our equivalent of R6. So the other one is the 2 ohm across the output here. Across the output. I think we'll save that, shall we? Let's save that. Let's just do some regular wiring. So I'm going to cut up my bit of Kynar here. Now Kynar is neat in that it's pretty rootable. So it stays put. The insulation doesn't melt on it. And you can kind of route it where you want. So if we're going to go for something kind of neat, we probably want to try to route it like that. We could just go to like that, basically. And if we decide that this is going to be the one that goes to ground, we want to take it up to this top left point. So what I'd normally do, and again, this is kind of risky because we're doing it onto, onto a tiny surface mount part, is to solder it onto the where it's coming from and then line it up to the destination. You'll see what I mean by that as I sort of go along here, but this is, this is a bit dodgy, so give me a sec. Okay, so it's it's just on there, just tacked. And it's a bit dodgy, because I do run my solder iron real hot. I've got it at like nearly 400 degrees, so if I touch it too long, it'll just lift that whole component, which I wanted to avoid. So what I'm gonna do, you see we've got these screw holes. I'm just gonna put in a screw temporarily here, which I think aligns with one that you'd get in the case. Just because it's kind of neat in that I can put it around there like a post. I could run it straight up with that battery. See that there? Doesn't that look neat? Doesn't that look neat? You wouldn't even know it's there. So I'm just going to cut that right at the end, just in line where it's going to go. That's that's as good as you can get, I'm telling you. If you're doing this and you do that, be proud of yourself. I think you're not going to get much better. So I'm going to turn this around. And then I'm just going to again, sorry, it's all black on black on black, so it's hard to see, but I'm just going to tack this right on to that end. Yeah, so that's the first connection made. So you can see the wire does look like it's flopping around a bit. It is loose, remember, the wire is just sitting loose. So what you tend to do is once you're happy with it, you can either put a bit of glue on it, or some people just use little stickers. So if you imagine just a black sticker, you can put a little black sticker on it. Or what I'm just gonna do is probably just leave it loose. Not really that bothered. Once you, once you kind of get it bent just right, it tends to stay. So you can see it's starting to stay now because I'm, I'm modifying it. I'm just bending it in certain strategic places. If you've worked with metal, if, you're, if you've ever been a metal worker or you've met, played with tin toys, you know, you know what I mean. You'll get it just right and it'll stay. So that's the first wire. So now the second wire, we have to uh, put that along. I'm just thinking because we have to uh, effectively facilitate this. I might do the two ohm thing here somewhere in the bottom, but we'll, we'll again let's not worry about that right now. Um, actually, <laughs> let let shall we? That's the second time I've said that, and the second time I've had to work on that next bit. It's just me trying to avoid it, really. Stop trying to avoid it, Andrew. Get on there. And I do apologise to anyone who's uh, watching this, hoping it's going to be one of those 
real quick guides, you know, like um, Linus Tech Tips or something, where it just magics and the thing is... <laughs> I literally just lost both of those things. Hang on, let me scout. One is one sat on the desk. Yep, yeah, I just caught it. Crikey. Um, yeah, this isn't like a, one of those sort of videos where it's just, this is what I did, and I show you I'm actually just going to do it. So that's the kind of... Uh, channel I've got if you've never looked at the channel before so I do apologize but I promise you if you follow the steps at least by the end whatever you see here will work because I won't put the video out generally if it doesn't work or if it doesn't work I'll tend to give you a warning at the beginning you can see I'm having a bit of trouble grabbing that got it finally got it it's not too easy so I'm just having a little look see here so I've got to get it on the this side of this resistor okay which precludes me from uh, just tacking it any old place. I'm just being a little bit cautious here because now I've got to join three things in one place. I'm just looking to see if there's any way to do that that's kind of easier. There's not. So I'm just going to tin this off camera. When I say tin that, what I'm doing is I'm just putting a little bit of solder on the edge of that resistor, which I have done now. So that's the two resistors bonded together. Again, probably struggling. I'm struggling to see it in the camera viewfinder, but maybe you've got a bigger picture than me. Um, maybe we should have filmed this in 4K today. But then I'm going to now put this wire on the junction between the two. Again, if you've got an electronic decent... There we go. You need some decent electronic um, tweezers for this, by the way. Do not even attempt this. Right, so now we have to get the wire that goes to the other side. Oh joy. It's, it's joy because it has to make two connections, so I need to connect that test point with that edge of that resistor as it goes past. Oh, this isn't the, uh, this isn't the easy guide I thought it was going to turn out to be. Again, doing it the insane way. Maybe I should just say this is not the way you want to do this. If you're doing this yourself, this is not the advised way. Just do the bit up to the jack and then buy some uh, through hole components. But I'm going to persevere again. I don't know about you. If it's this kind of if it if I if I'm doing something, I'm doing something. You know what I mean? I've, I'm just doing it with whatever parts I've got. I'm going to just get it done. I think we're almost there now. Anyway, so just I'm just sort of gently pushing this kind of around. If I, you can see I'm, I'm almost at the point of um, creating a short circuit, so I'm just trying to be aware of that in the way I've rooted this, which is fine. I'm saying it's almost creating a short circuit. If you think about it, most of electronics are almost creating short circuits because on PCBs the tolerances are so tiny. And we're almost doing the equivalent of making PCB tracks out of Kynar. I mean, that's really all we're doing right now. So that's that's it there. That's hooked up pretty nice. Um, don't be dissuaded, by the way, of this approach I've taken. Just because I've taken the uh, long and tedious approach using surface mount stuff. I mean, don't let my kind of mistake put you off. I mean, so what I need to do, I need this wire to bridge two things. So I'm going to cover, cut it a bit longer than you would normally want to do. And I'm going to strip it quite long. I'm going to strip it probably almost a centimetre. I think that should do it. If not, I'm always trim a bit more. In fact, let's get even another bit more. We're going to get five mil more. And again, I'm going to zoom in. Don't worry. You'll be able to see why I'm doing this this way. So you can see, if you remember, we've got the earth there, but we've got the left and the right, but we wanted to join the left and the rights. So I've cut the kynar in such a way that I can bend this over like that, you see? And I can join there and join there. And it's, it's, not, it's not so pretty. Again, do what you've got to do. 
it all depends on your style. My style is pretty much no style, uh, <laughs> freestyle. I just want it to work. Um, but there's a lot of guys out there who are just like artists with a soldering iron and uh, too right. If you can do it, if you do it and you've got the patience to do it, go ahead. For me, I'm more of a nap this works that's good enough for me that's what i wanted to achieve i just want it to work um, practical but that's me done look at that i mean that's not that it's not ugly is it really i mean it's just a thing just a thing it's just odd because maybe you don't normally see a diagonal so you could just leave that a bit longer if you want and then you could uh, just root it like as an l shape and just wouldn't look like a diagonal but i think that's what we're going to go with I wonder if um, there's going to be any interesting effects because it's running next to the Bluetooth Wi-Fi module here. Being near your headphones, that could be a bit of a, a boo-boo. At, at the moment, it doesn't matter because it doesn't seem to be... Uh, those those things don't seem to be turned on on this. Let's see if we can get this in. How did this go again? It's just reminding myself on how this switch goes in. I think it was like that. I just want to make sure you see it doesn't interfere our, our wires. Ah, oh, there we go. I don't think our wires are interfering with that at all. Good. So I'm just going to put this speaker wire in like that, tuck it in out of the way for now. We should be done really, we should be able to try this. So let's get the battery in. Again, I don't know why it's booting up into Sega's Moonwalker, but I think that was just what I was playing with. No particular game preference for me right now. So we're going to plug the back cover on. Now it's all loose. Remember, I've left all the back loose and everything. I've got my headphones here, so I'm going to I'm going to put them on. Actually, I'm going to put these on. And uh, once it's working, I shall show you the results. You don't get much sound. If you notice, by the way, there's no sound at all is kind of good that's what we wanted perfect so definitely sound so this is quite good ratio so that's low volume and then I'm gonna okay and then off so there let me just give another little listen Yep, that's absolutely perfect. So that's pretty much the levels you want. So that, that's it. That's it kind of working now. Just give me a moment. I'm going to do this off offline now, jump cut. Let me just put all the screws in and we'll just wrap up in a second. Yes. And unfortunately for you boys and girls at home, you can't hear what I'm doing, but bobble bobbling is good. Here you go. Have a listen. And you can see... The volume control works as expected. It's all good. It's all pretty neat. It'd be nice if I get um, a headphones with a right angle on it, but that's a job for another day. But just another little look at it. You can see here from the back, not much you can tell different apart from that's disconnected, but there you can see my little wires running up and they're coming across there that you can't really see that. Remember that little diagonal we have in? It's in there. There's your headphone socket and it's in like that. The only downside is I wish I put a bit of foam on this battery because it's a little bit of rattling now. It's a bit rattling. He doesn't like being rattled. So I'm going to put a bit of foam on that battery. That's my only mod, though, I think, just to put the foam on, and then I'm happy. So, yeah, hopefully that's done it for you. If not, join my Discord and get in and ask me in Discord. We'll discuss it. But just to let you know, again, if you're using through-hole uh, resistors, it's really easy. Put one resistor there, one resistor there, and these two wires go up. Ignore this little speakery icon I've got here. Do, 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 do. just wrap this wire up so it's connected to the bit that goes to ground and then get this wire up and connect that bit that goes to the other speakers there we go see that's how you do it ground that's me circuit right there for you and get that ratio right let's say I, I used uh, what was it? it was 820 and 120 or something ohms about right works fine perfect for headphone use volume still works perfectly when it's loud it's pretty loud when it's quiet it's definitely quiet enough please have a go at making this if you want to be pinged when i make another video on this please consider subscribing liking if you think this video is any good um, and come and chat me on discord or twitter or wherever you want to find me as ever guys thanks for watching